So, uh, John, uh, what uh, what is the architecture of the system in just a couple of concepts and a couple of sentences? Sure. So, I like to think about the architecture really at three different levels. So, at the highest level, we have this idea of a virtual world browser. The idea is that the client can connect to, multi to different virtual worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and as it connects to each virtual world, much like a web browser, it downloads the content and behavior of that world so that each world can have its own different functionality. Stepping one level below that, when the client connects to an individual server, we have a different, that's the architecture of the actual server, which is connect, made up of a collection of different services. And those services all cooperate to provide collaboration within an individual world and provide the functionality of that world. So examples of those services are things like the Darkstar server, which keeps track of where users and objects are in the world, and the shared audio server, which does all the audio mixing so that users can hear each other. So this is really a client-server networking model um, where the client is connecting to a bunch of different services on the server. And at the lowest level, we have the content of an individual world. And this is primarily the connection between the client and the Darkstar server. And that, that, at that level, the system is really made up of this, this spatial collection of objects, each of which has a position in the world. Um, and so an object is something like an avatar or this building behind me or the mountains in the background. And each object has some set of properties that's shared between all the users who are seeing that object. Um, and the system uses messages to keep those properties in sync so that everybody sees the same thing and, collabor can, co and can collaborate. Okay, that sounds very good. So um, I'm going to ask you uh, another couple of questions. Uh, sure. Where are the main, uh, from a development point of view, where are the main interfaces or classes that uh, that uh, people should be looking at to start uh, developing uh, modules? Yeah, I think the, um, when you're developing Wonderland module, I think the most important class to look at at first is the one that's conceptually easiest is the cell class. And that defines an object in the world. And an object, as I said earlier, is made up of these shared properties that all the different clients in the world see. And so that's how we really establish this synchronized communication is by setting those properties and by having everybody see the same properties. So each cell is made up of two important pieces. On the client, there's this cell, uh, the cell class, which actually defines the rendering, how an object looks in the world, how it reacts to state changes. And then on the server, there's a corresponding cell MO class. And MO is managed object, which is a dark star term. Um, and that's really a state holder that holds this coordinated state that everybody is synchronizing and is responsible for sending messages back and forth. So if you look at extensions to those, er, everything that you see in the world, from avatars to buildings to pianos that you can play, are done as extensions of this, these cell and cell MO classes. So that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, John. And uh, the last question: When you're talking about extension uh, and you're talking about modules, how how many different kinds of modules there are? Because you can build modules with uh, JME or with Swing, uh, but you can also give services and things. How many different kinds of modules can you build? You can build all kinds of different modules. I think the, there are a bunch of key module types. I think the the object is the one that's most obvious and, and easiest to understand, um, adding a new, a new type of object to the world. Um, but beyond that, um, there are things called, there are objects called capabilities. And a capability is something that can be applied to any object in the world. And so, for example, the capab a capability might be something like the portal capability, where if you touch something, it transports you to a different part of the world. Um, or the audio capability, that something plays audio. So the, another type of module is develop is capabilities that go across cells. Um, another type of module is something that's fundamentally non-spatial. So objects have a representation in the world. They live at a particular location in the world. Um, there are functions, things like the text chat, um, that are relevant no matter where you are in the world. And so that's a different type of module that's referred to as a, uh, as a plugin. And the plugin just loads when the client loads and is able to react to all the different kinds of things that the client sees no matter where in the world it is. 
And so again, text chat is an example of that. Um, things like this, the editors, uh, those are examples of non-spatial extensions. Uh, each of those extensions I've talked about so far has pieces on the Wonderland client and the Wonderland server. There are also extensions to other parts of the system. So for example, you can build a web administration user interface and you can build that using a module. So that's a different that's a different type of module, one that primarily affects the web server. But, and that, but modules, that, a lot of modules might have parts in multiple of these areas. <laughs> but that be the um you were talking in the list uh this week about a web module. That's the that's what you've just described, a module that uh, that adds, uh, for instance, functionality to the web admin console or something like that. Yes, and in fact, you can use and you can. The web server in Wonderland is based on a Java EE server, and you can add any Java EE application to that web server mm -hmm. using a Wonderland module. So, you know, for example, if you want to build a web service that interacts with an external, with some uh, external service, you can do that. Um, you can add all kinds of different web APIs, and we use that all over the system. So from everything from placemarks to storing the world backup, the WFF, mm -hmm. um, to storing the content in the content repository, all of that happens through modules that are stored on the web server. All right. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah.